This video is about the rotation transform. We're going to talk about how we can rotate objects in 3D space. First, I'd like to say that you could rotate in terms of vectors. You can rotate position vectors and you can rotate direction vectors. And this is in contrary to the translation vector where you can uh, translation transform where you can only rotate position vectors. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> start out by defining three basic types of uh rotation matrices. Once you guys know about these mo rotation matrices, uh, you have to multiply these rotation matrices by the coordinates of the object to rotate that object. So these are the three basic types of rotation matrices and I guess the only types of rotation matrices. Um, these are like the ground of a rotation where you can combine uh, rotation matrices in the x, y, and z direction to get a uh, final pr rotation product which you can in turn apply to the object and a rotation matrix multiplied by a rotation matrix is a rotation matrix and here we have some magic where 4x4 four four matrices have randomly appeared on the screen and <clears throat> what these are is that there are a bunch of algorithms that I'm sure someone smart calculated by themselves and these set of algorithms define rotations in each of these axes Hence, um, like we defined the x, y, and z axes in um, in this in this order, hence this would be a one, two, and a three the numerical order. So, in order to rotate the coordinates of an object in the x uh, on the x axes, uh, this is the algorithm. When you multiply this matrix by any vector or another matrix, all the coordinates on the x-axis stay the same because of this one right here. And the same position right here, all the y-coordinates stay the same when you multiply it by the rotation matrix, this one. And the other ones, all the other places, uh, these two have sines and cosines and negative sines, I guess. And these are just, I, I'd recommend you write these down somewhere or you memorize them or they're available online because they're, these are the general basic algorithms. Anywhere you search of rotation transformations, you will find these algorithms. I'm not going to give you a proof of this. Therefore, you could, you could basically write something, if in general mathematical terms, you could write something like this, where you have the rotation transformation, uh, rotation transformation R right here, and it's a, the rotation happens on the i-axis, which could be z, x, or y. And all rotation matrices have a determinant of 1. And they are also orthogonal matrices. Hence, if you have two rotation matrices, let's just say x and y, and you multiply them together to get a Z matrix. This matrix will also be a rotation matrix and it will be orthogonal. Hmm. But the order does matter. <laughs> Hence in the actual product this rotate if uh, in this case this rotation would be done first and that actually depends if you're doing row or column vector notation but one of these rotations will be done first and the other way around. <laughs> So the inverse of a rotation matrix, let's say we have the inverse. So conceptually, if you think about it, the inverse of a rotation matrix should rotate an object the same amount of theta radians in the opposite direction, but on the same axes. For example, if this was x. So if Rx theta was, um, oops, Rx theta originally, was a rotation on the x-axis by around like 90 degrees say uh, this would be around the x-axis again but in the opposite direction so if it was clockwise before it would be counterclockwise 90 degrees and the way you define this is that all you you have to do is make the angle theta a negative so this is the inverse this is the inverse of the rotation matrix all right, so it's now time for an example. 
Okay, so I'm trying to make this fancy. Let's take let's take a triangle as an object instead of a vector this time. So let's say we have our graph right here, our plane, sorry. And imagine it has all three x, y, and z axes. But the ones I've denoted here are x and y only for now. Now what I want to do is I want to have a triangle like this in that part of the graph. And we will define a point P in the triangle right here. So that point is a P. And this triangle is a T. It's called a T triangle. I mean, the triangle we call T itself. And what I want to do is I want to rotate this triangle around the Z axis. So let's say if this was the Z axis. Okay, I want to rotate this around the Z axis, so like this, these angles right here. And what this means is that all the coordinates on the Z axis, on the Z axis right here, so we have the X, Y, and Z axis, the coordinates on the X axis, all the coordinates on the X axis will change, all the ones on the Y coordinate uh, axis will change, and none of the ones on the Z axis will change because we're rotating around the Z axis. And I want to rotate this triangle about the point P. So basically what I'm trying to say is that point P should be the axis of rotation and this triangle should maybe look something like this by the time it's done rotation. So when I said over here all X and Y's change, the only ones that don't change are uh, whatever point P is. So let's just say P, X, and P, Y. So P, X, and P, Y are the only X and Y coordinates that don't change, all the other ones do. So to do this, we're going to define a set of transformations. It, we don't just apply a rotation transformation uh, straight up to the object. And the way I'm going to do it is actually going to make it simpler for you guys to visualize, just in case you guys are beginner programmers. So let's say we have this object, and the first thing I want to do to rotate this about the point P is that let's say we have our graph right here, right? We have this good looking graph. I want point P to be the origin. And, oops. I want point P to be the origin so that when I apply the rotation matrix um, R, I'll call it R again, when I apply R to this triangle right here, it should rotate, but in order to apply this R to this triangle, it should be about the origin. So what I should do is that first I want to somehow translate this triangle to the center here uh, so that P is the origin. Um, and how I would do this is, if you guys remember the translation from before or my other videos, I'm actually going to apply a, transform, a translation, translation transform. And what am I going to apply into it? If you think about it, when, when the game engine creates the triangle, it's right here. This is how it's created. And somehow it, it translated it to this this position therefore the game engine must use a translation transform and the translation transform that the game engine used should have been t of p because it translated it by the p vector to this coordinate so that all the relative coordinates of the triangle are also translated relative to the coordinate p hence i'm going to apply a negative p translation transform to get it back to where it came from. Then comes the next step where we will apply the rotation transform we just learnt in this video to this object right here. And then the triangle will look something like this because I'm going to choose my angle to be pi by 4. Remember we want radians. So a pi by 4 transformation um, angle 
rot uh, given to the rotation matrix. We'll rotate this um, roughly about this much. And this right here is still point P. Point P is still the origin. Every All the other coordinates of the triangle changed except for the point P. Now we have the desired rotation we want, but the position of the object is at the origin. The position of the point P is at the origin and not actually at the point P. Because this actually is in point P, like I labeled here. It's actually the origin, right? Remember, there's always the z-axis. Didn't go anywhere. Still there. But here, this was the second step. So this was the first step. This was the second step. And I applied a rotation theta along the z-axis, right? The third step is, yes, I know most of you already guessed this. Third step is going to be the actual translation that the computer might have applied in the first place to get it there. And, whoops, I shouldn't have wrote it there, but just imagine um, this is all, it's all good. So this is P again, the actual P that was right here, except for now our triangle sort of looks like this in this graph. <clears throat> so the actual, the whole uh, product that came out of steps one, two, and three was, let's say we have our product called X. X was that final transformation. Let's say I concatenated all these transformations and make one big transformation called X. So the first thing we did was I did a negative translation. Then I did a rotation. And then I did a normal translation. So why I wrote this again from left, uh, sorry, right to left is because we use column vector notation. And I just like to use column vector notation because it's just uniform among the web and most books as well. And so th this product happens first. Then this thing makes a product, let's just say one and one and this translation multiplied by each other to form a product two and product two is X. So now we can take our object, let's say our triangle's coordinates were something like a S. These were the coordinates of our triangle. It could be a matrix, it could be a vector. And S times, um, I should write a small x. S multiplied by x should give us the rotation we want. And that is today for today's, this video. Please like my channel, please subscribe to my channel and share my videos and uh, give me some feedback. Thank you.